The Carolina Mantis has been one of my favorite insects since I was a kid. Its appearance is almost out of this world. The triangular head and the large compound eyes resemble that of a Hollywood space alien. And the legs, the way they look, the way they are held. Like all insects, the mantis has six legs. However, its front two are wildly different from the other four. The forward two are much larger and are very powerful. These insects are often called praying mantis due to the way they hold their front appendages while hunting. These raptorial serrated forelegs are often held in that position for a reason so that the mantis can reach out and snatch prey with lightning speed. The spiny legs help the mantis hold its prey with a vice grip while it eats the victim, often while it is still alive. And the praying mantis seems so mysterious. The name mantis means diviner and was given to the insect by ancient Greeks who believed that it possessed supernatural powers. Photos of mantises with hummingbirds in their grasp have circulated on social media, which leads some people to believe it's a common occurrence. It's not. Scientists believe when this does happen, it's because the mantis is there in search of other pollinators such as bumblebees and wasps. Another thing, Carolina mantis females have been known to eat males during and or after mating, but it isn't as common as many people might think. And it only occurs if the female is very hungry or agitated. Oh, you don't have to bite my head off! The Carolina mantis is considered a gardener's best friend. It consumes a huge quantity of insects that are considered pests that could otherwise damage or destroy flowers and produce. Adults sit on flowers, garden plants, and shrubs waiting for insect prey to come along. Like most other mantids, the adult female Carolina mantis is larger than the male. Females have wider bodies than males. In addition, while adult females have stunted wings and are unable to fly, the slender adult males have full wings and are quite capable of flight. Carolina mantises are highly variable in color patterns. Colors range from light green to brownish, and they can change color to match their surroundings. However, the color change only occurs during molts as they grow. These insects eat caterpillars, crickets, grasshoppers, moths, katydids, butterflies, etc. In late September through October, females begin to lay eggs in clutches. Eggs are thin disks, and females usually lay them in groups on twigs or branches. A mother covers her eggs with a foamy substance believed to seal in moisture so the eggs do not dry out. A completed egg clutch is called an oothika, and it looks like this. Some people say uthika, but to each their own. Now, I mentioned that they usually create these egg clutches on twigs or branches, but those aren't the only places. You may have seen these around the outside of your home. Here is one attached to the side of a house. This one here is older. After the oothika is completed, nymphs hatch the following spring or early summer and undergo a series of molts before reaching adulthood. Each stage of their life is called an instar. This very small individual had grown considerably and was probably in its second instar. The Carolina mantis occurs all throughout the United States, Mexico, and down into South America. In much of the United States, the Carolina mantis overwinters in the egg phase. However, in warmer climates, these insects may thrive and breed all year long. According to scientists, the earliest known fossil mantises date from 25 million to 36 million years ago. Carolina mantis is the state insect of South Carolina. It inhabits meadows, woodlands, and scrub forests. And it is not unusual to find them around homes and gardens, even in suburban areas. The Carolina mantis has strong, complex mouth parts which help with eating all sorts of prey. In 2019, there was a large female Carolina mantis which lived in the holly bushes in front of my home. Holly, a name I gave her for obvious reasons, was a very efficient hunter. She was also quite tolerant of me and always allowed close-up photography. One night, I stepped out and she had just pounced on a field cricket. I was observing her while quickly getting my camera ready. She began chewing on the cricket's neck, then popped its head off. Anyway, here's Holly with her kill. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.